Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to talk about something that will actually blow your socks off. It did when I first saw this. So, what are the Earth's changing temperatures? Well, let's take a look again at the Earth's orbit, and we know the Earth's orbit is elliptical, and we know that currently, when we are at uh, perihelion, the closest, the closest point to the Sun, the northern hemisphere has its winter, so therefore we have mild winters in the northern hemisphere, and the southern hemisphere has its summer, since it's closer to the sun, the southern hemisphere therefore has relatively hot summers. Currently, in, when the Earth is over here, farther from the sun at aphelion, the northern hemisphere has its summers, therefore we have mild summers, because we're farther away from the sun, and the southern hemisphere has cold winters because it's farther away from the sun during the southern hemisphere's winter. Also realizing that the Earth will move slower here, so the summers for the northern hemisphere are longer, Earth moves quickly here, so the winters are much shorter here because the Earth moves more quickly when it's close to the sun. What is really surprising though is that the Earth's temperature on average, you would think, well on average doesn't it stay about the same because when the northern hemisphere has winter, the southern hemisphere has as summer so the temperature averages out and when the north hemisphere has summer and the southern hemisphere has winter don't, don't the temperatures average out but that's not the case because most of the land mass is at the northern hemisphere of the earth and when the winter comes even though we have mild winters at the northern hemisphere relatively speaking because we're closer to the sun we receive more energy from the sun since there's a lot more land mass at the northern hemisphere compared to the southern hemisphere. The temperatures cool way down in the wintertime at the northern hemisphere. And overall, on average, the temperature of the whole world plummets by an astounding amount. So here's the average temperature of the entire Earth, northern and southern hemisphere combined. And when the northern hemisphere has summer, when we're farther away from the sun, that would be in this location right here, the whole Earth receives about 6.5% less energy, yet at that time you can see that the average temperature of the world is a lot warmer. When the Northern Hemisphere experiences winter time, that's when the Earth is closer to the Sun, when it receives 6.5% more energy on average for the whole Earth, it's a lot colder on the Earth. And just wait till you see the difference in temperature. The difference in temperature on the Earth, the average temperature, between the northern hemisphere summer and the northern hemisphere's winter, notice it's about 7.5 degrees centigrade warmer when we're farther away from the sun and 7.5 degrees colder, centigrade degrees, when we're closer to the sun. When we're closer to the sun and receive 6.5% more energy, when we're closer, the whole Earth is 7.5 degrees centigrade colder than when we're farther away from the sun and receive six and a half percent less energy. 7.5 degrees centigrade is about 13.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Every year the average temperature of the earth goes to swings, temperature swings of 13 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. That's amazing but it is very temperate right now because our winters are mild and our winters are short. What happens is in about 12,000 years everything will be reversed. In about 12,000 years, the Earth will be a lot closer when the Northern Hemisphere has summer, so we'll have hotter summers in the Northern Hemisphere and mild winters in the Southern Hemisphere. And when the Earth is farther away from the Sun, the Northern Hemisphere will have winters far away from the Sun, meaning bitter cold winters in the Northern Hemisphere, and the Southern Hemisphere will have mild summers. What will be the temperature swings then? Well, don't forget, not only are we farther away, when the northern hemisphere has the winter, the winters will be longer because the Earth will be moving slower in its path. And so the temperature swings on a yearly basis will look more like this. So then, when we're farther away from the Sun, when the northern hemisphere experiences winter, it will be bitter cold and the temperature swings on the Earth will be astounding. 7.5 degrees centigrade today on average, then 12, 13, 14, who knows? We haven't quite calculated yet. We probably are not able to calculate it accurately, but a good estimate is probably maybe close to double the, the, the difference. And temperature in the whole world will just plummet tremendously when the northern hemisphere has its winters. The snow buildup and the ice buildup will be enormous, and the summers may be too short, 
to melt it all away and on average the Earth's temperature will plummet and this may be the reason why we'll have another ice age in the near future when this whole thing resets. At least that would be one big factor of it. People don't generally realize that the Earth goes through tremendous temperature swings. And what's even more astounding is that the Earth is a lot hotter when we're farther away from the Sun and a lot colder when we're close to the Sun. And that is going to even be more pronounced when the Earth slowly makes its way to the other side so that we experience our winters when we're farther away from the Sun. And at that point it will be amazing how cold it's going to get in the Northern Hemisphere and on average for the whole world. And that's what we learn in astronomy.